the most people in the world haven't seen a drone show yet and it's also like always very special for me to do drone shows and it gets more and more um, basically every month. It, it's a different element of creativity with some advantages and some limitations. I mean limitations in terms of I can't do 20 minute show with drones um, or with one set of drones because we have like limited echo capabilities and everything but on the other hand is a complete uh, other element that they can create an image right up in the sky. Um, there is no other element which can have delivered and can deliver information, images and emotions in such a big scale. Even with a firework, it's just like it's just on and off and on and off and you can uh, create like a nice um, choreography with music together, but you can't just freeze something in the air, which you can do with drones. I don't believe what the most people saying that like the a drone light show is like, uh, like a firework. I mean, firework is also associated with the sound and people know this for, for forever and for years. And uh, drone is just the, the new element of it. And um, it has so many more uh, possibilities in terms of creating this emotion and imaging and transporting information, um, really. We are here uh, at the West Inn Hotel, which is the hotel on top of the Elbphilharmonie in Hamburg. And here is our um, headquarter of production offices. And right now we are here in my pre-production studio. The production here is the launch of a new product by British American Tobacco. It's called Glow. It's a tabac heater. So we're having here a guerrilla marketing um, show, which means nobody in, in Hamburg knows about the show. There is just like a very, very small VIP party with just 60 uh, visitors or invited guests for the performance and um, the rest is completely guerrilla marketing. So we are just showing up with 150 drones up here and um, have a, about a 10 minutes performance here. My background is as a lighting designer and um, it more and more becomes that since things change that I'm more and more going into the field of producer. So um, uh, on the most of the projection, I'm the creative producer now and um, oversee the overall creative process, which includes the music production, which includes storyboard, storytelling, working with different agencies and heading the overall concept of a show. It was quite a technical challenge for so many reasons. Um, in the first place, we had like uh, the harbor area which is a high security area so there were so many things we really had in mind and we need to take care of like radio frequencies the day-to-day -day life in the harbor so um, when a ship comes in the ship comes out they obviously are um, have more rights than we have here that means a show could be postponed and the direct communication with the airport authorities um, with the harbor authorities so that we get like the right spot on the one hand and on the other hand we have like a, a huge open area so and um, for this reason um, there, there can be more wind so Hamburg is known to be pretty windy and during like the first side with us we had like pretty pretty strong winds so that was a thing we definitely had to count in as for the flight time of the drones an example so the more the drone has to work the less they can fly and um, the other thing um, which is for me as a designer uh, most important was um, the drone launching point is over 400 meters from the uh, VIP event so I had to cover like a massive area we have like a huge lockdown and amount of security on the start and landing field. We are having the Lion King's Theater. So at the parking lot, we are starting with the 150 drones and we have 30 sky beamers. We're using clay parking stylus here um, to fill the image of the show and um, give a bit more of dynamic to the show. From the experience of my last shows, I would say um, I wouldn't go under 50 drones because you really can't do any shapes in a, in a very good aspect um, uh, with less. But you don't necessarily need a lot of drones. I mean, 150, 200, uh, like this is a very, very good number to create like high quality images. It was pretty clear for me that I need something to enhance the show, to make it bigger. I mean, the drone display is in its uh, biggest part, about 300 meters of width, but I wanted to get bigger for the media images. And on the other hand, using moving lights uh, or sky beamers, like we use it here, gives me the, the opportunity to, to fill empty spaces, work better with transitions and bring a bit more dynamic to this whole thing because it's very, very hard to do like really, really quick moves with drones all the time. So this is uh, now made all with the stylus. I knew I need something 
very, very bright. Before I used eye pointies on the show, which is a rock solid workhorse on my other shows. But in this case, um, we knew we want to work with colors and um, we have like a huge distance, more than 400 meters for the audience. So I needed a light which can deliver like sharp beams in color of a huge distance. They need to be small and they need to be very, very power saving because we don't have that much power available on site. And yeah, there was no other option at the end to, as, as for the stylus. It's hard to tell if the laser engine is the future of, of moving lights, but I like to get into new concepts of how lighting can be done. During the shootouts, there was such a massive difference. I mean, I, I wouldn't go for a new model of lights if this is just like a 5% um, brightness increase, or if I can only measure it. The difference was so huge. Um, that there was no other choice in using stylus here. Thanks to Vision 2 and um, Clay Parkey, they helped us sourcing those lights and helped us in the complete process with pre-production everything so that we can achieve the looks which I actually designed for the show. We're using the first time the Grand MA3 system, the MA3 compact console. It was pretty clear that we wanted to go go with modern technology more. And um, I mean, I'm pretty well known as a Hawk user, but we felt, okay, we need to look left and right and see what's new in technology. The MA3 was from the beginning very, very intuitive. And so far it uh, was rock solid and super reliable. The other thing is uh, I'm working with a pretty, pretty compact setup always when I'm there. So we're producing in a big studio and I like to be things as small as it possibly gets, so they're very, very flexible. And yeah, the Compact XT seems to be like the, the right desk size. End of last year, when Patrick from Innovisco Mobile Media approached us, we worked together uh, on a few concepts. We had like a few more agencies involved. And it was first planned as a live event, so an uh, event for a massive audience. Then um, Corona came in and it was like postponed we all agreed that there is no event happening this year and uh, it probably won't be by next year. So um, the client uh, Glow asked us to develop a complete new concept for the show and um, everybody was still fascinated about this drone part. So we, we were really, really focusing quick on drones rather than a, a, a live show with artists and anything. And um, yeah, from there we, we were sitting together with the creative team to just scribble a bit um, uh, from and see from the briefing of the customer what can we achieve with this. We all agreed on one uh, very, very creative and um, abstract uh, concept, um, which is basically um, like a lot of cool shapes where, where everybody can find himself in the story. There is really no conventional light show drones. Um, this is nothing you can buy out of the box. We have like very, very tough conditions here, a huge amount of drones and a very, very complex imaging to imaging design. We do light shows up to eight to 10 minutes. So the battery lifetime supplies the drones for 50 minutes, but we have to um, deduct obviously the launching, the coming back to home, and uh, we all have like a little bit of spare just in case something happens, like an airplane would have an emergency landing here and uh, authorities would um, ask us to put the show down. We have about 200 batteries, which are synchronized and charged, so that we always have like a full set of batteries plus a few spare. For 150 drone shows, we have 165 drones, so that means 15 spare. Um, which we can exchange like really quick. And uh, synchronization runs, we have like a, a broadcasting truck um, with all the controls for the drones, with the aerials, with the antennas and everything. And we are working with satellite signals to uh, synchronize the lighting, um, the drones. And I myself, I'm, I'm uh, at the rooftop at a hot dog cafe um, directing the show. Basically, we have a five-people drone crew. There's the pilot in charge and uh, the operations manager um, or the on-site manager and one person. Then we have three drone techs here and one lighting tech on the launching pad. The design process is a bit different from designing a light show. I mean, with lights, I know how quick they are reacting, what I can do, and I can do very, very quick changes. Obviously, this, obviously this doesn't happen really with drones. So during the design process, I start with a blank piece of paper and really drawings and see 
uh, how the customer feels about uh, the base designs. And then we have to figure out how many drones do we actually need to accomplish this in a, in a very good um, quality. And then from the transition, the good part is I write the music and I, I arrange the music for the show as well. So I can arrange the music basically to the transition time of the drones. Because um, sometimes, like with the very big images or very complex images, um, one drone needs a 300 meter distance from one point to the other. And um, obviously a lot of drones doing the same thing, so they can't like go all parallel. They, they have like a bit space between each other, which takes more time. So we have transitions here from about 20 seconds for the uh, for the big images and yeah this all needed to be in count this is why we are starting very very slowly with the, the small looks and then going really really big so because then we have to change in the music and due to this music change we have like um, the possibility to stretch the time and uh, sometimes we are playing with transition times which means we are not waiting until the full image is there this is like if you um if you just uh, working through papers. Um, so we are using the effect of the last drones, fulfilling the image as a transition to give just more dynamic to the entire show. On the one hand, we have very, very simple ladders, which is not like a big of a problem in design. And on the other hand, we have like super complex images like a sheep, which is animated by itself, an example, or the mouth, which is like, um, very very complex in having like something which looks really modern from the design part of the way is easy seenable as a mouth and it stands like as a bit of an artwork rather than just a simple icon or symbol and um, fits to the language of the product we're actually um, showing and presenting here the challenge design was was really to put a show together with very exciting graphics which are still fit to the story of what the customer wanted to show and um, going into this high-tech level, which is also one of the main reasons a drone show was chosen for this event. I mean, it's always like a fascinating moment, although I, I went through this whole process with design and programming, it's always a fascinating moment to see a project like this becoming live. This is why I always um, fight it for having a relationship in the show between the city. Um, so we have like this Moin Moin Hamburg and uh, the, the, the logo of the city. And this is when people really, really went on the show and said, oh, why, well, yeah, we are cheering. And um, it's always fascinating and great to see for a designer when a project comes to life and people reacting to it.